Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube physics class. Today we are on the second part of standing wave. So standing wave or stationary wave, we have done the first part. The link of the first part you will see in the on the iCard. So you can click there to see the first part of the stationary wave where we discussed the difference between the progressive wave and stationary wave. Then we demonstrated an experiment how to produce a standing wave between two fixed ends. And we have found the harmonics that, you know, the first harmonic, the second harmonic, the third uh, harmonic. So the consecutive harmonics are found at what multiple of fundamental frequency. We have obtained an expression there that between two fixed ends, the harmonics are found at an interval of f naught, twice f naught, thrice f naught, five f four f naught, five f naught, and so on. It means the harmonics are found at integral multiple of fundamental frequency between two fixed ends. Now here we would like to see that if we form a standing wave between one close and one open end, fixed end means close end, open end means it is not fixed right there. There is no rigid support. So if the standing wave is being produced between one close and one open end, what actually happens? So here on this uh, experiment, on this diagram, we have drawn a tube of length L. One end of the tube is closed, the other end is open. A tuning fork is this is the diagram I'm talking about, okay? Just uh, follow me. This is the diagram I'm talking about, okay? So just at the open end of the tube, we held a tuning fork, and you know that tuning fork has its own frequency, means when it is, I mean, it is labeled, it is labeled on the body of the tuning fork, that what is its frequency. So if you struck this, uh, if this tuning fork, uh, if this tuning fork is struck, is hammered and held at the end of this tube, then this tuning fork will be the, these two prongs of the tuning fork will be vibrating at that particular frequency which is written over here which is labeled over here at, on the body of the tuning fork so <clears throat> we will keep on varying the you know tuning fork at different frequency we will uh, cause the particles to vibrate so for that particular frequency what we call as fast harmonic the wave is being created and obviously it is a longitudinal wave because we hear a sharp sound uh, at this end of the tube but longitudinal wave cannot be drawn so we are just representing this longitudinal wave as the transverse wave so we're just representing it this is the representation actually this is the longitudinal wave so particle just starts vibrating down the length of the air column of this tube so this is the air column so this air particles are moving back and forth moving back and forth so this is the wave that is traveling through the tube and ultimately it is reflecting back from the close end so the incident wave from this side and the reflected wave from that side will be superposing with each other and the superposition as we know can be of two types constructive and destructive constructive causes the highest amplitude of 
vibration destructive causes the lowest or zero amplitude of vibration one thing to remember close end always corresponds to a no node close end always will correspond to a node wherever it is uh, the close end at that particular point it is for sure node because close end causes the phase to change by 180 degree so when phase changes by 180 degree that becomes anti phase and superposition between two waves in anti phase will result in destructive superposition and there we see no vibration or minimum vibration of the particle so close end corresponds to a node where open end corresponds to an anti node anti node highest amplitude of vibration node lowest zero amplitude of vibration so the fundamental frequency at this particular frequency f naught we see the wave to be like this where open end causes an anti node so we see an anti node here close end causes a node we see a node here lowest frequency lowest number of wave been fit here and at this length of tube we see that it is one fourth of a lambda if you can just recall the earlier discussion between two fixed ends at the lowest frequency we have seen because two fixed ends so two fixed end will correspond to two nodes so two nodes were there one anti node was in the middle of that so it was something like this this is the wave that we drew right so this was half of the wave and here in this case between one open and on close one fourth of a wave have been fit so length l equals to lambda over 4 lambda equals to 4 l now we increased the frequency we again brought another tuning fork of higher frequency and just the same way it was struck and then made to held at the end of the tube and this causes the air particles inside the tube what we call as air column to vibrate and this incident wave gets reflected from the fixed end of the tube and they to superpose each other they form a series of constructive and destructive superposition means nodes and anti nodes so just the frequency immediately greater than the first harmonic what we call as second harmonic we see one more node one more anti node here in this case in the first harmonic we have seen one anti node one node and now we see in this particular length of the tube which has not been changed the frequency has been changed and in this particular length of the tube we have seen more wave to fit here because the frequency increases frequency means number of waves per second so more waves have been now fit here uh, in this length of the tube so how much of the wave we see here in this length of the tube it is anti node to immediate next node is lambda over 4 node to immediate node is lambda by 2 so node to node the distance is lambda by 2 and node to anti node or anti node to node is half of lambda by 2 that is lambda by 4 so how much of the lambda we have got in this length of the tube it is thrice lambda by 4 now when we are subjecting this lambda it becomes 4l by 3 it becomes 4l by 3 so how much the lambda became it was initially four times l now it is one third of 4l so since lambda became one third it is obvious the frequency is going to be three times because frequency is inversely proportional to lambda since lambda became one third frequency has to become three times that means between two fixed ends the harmonics were found at f naught twice f naught thrice f naught integral multiple of f naught but between one close and one open we did not find the harmonic at twice f naught it is obvious it is clear 
twice f naught will not give us any standing wave pattern. So if it is, for an example, 20 hertz, say, then it has to be here 20 times 3, 60 hertz. So the second harmonic is found at 60 hertz if the first harmonic was found at 20 hertz. So we are not going to see the standing wave pattern at twice of f naught, as in at 40 hertz, unlike here the standing wave between two fixed ends that we found earlier. Okay, I'm just referring to the first part of the standing wave uh, discussion. Now, if we move forward, we again on this uh, particular diagram, I mean, the same tube is here, length has not been altered. We here again kept a tuning fork of higher frequency, which is third harmonic. Here, this F2, this is going to be third harmonic, first harmonic, second harmonic, and then third harmonic. It is third harmonic. So, this third harmonic, obviously, since frequency has been increased, more waves will going to be fit here in this length of the tube. So, earlier, there were two anti-nodes, two nodes. So, by one node and one anti-node, it is going to increase. So, here it is three anti-nodes and three nodes in this same length of the tube. So, more waves being fit means the distance between nodes and anti-nodes decreases. So, here the lambda by two is from one anti-node to next anti-node and from next anti-node to immediate next anti-node again lambda by two and anti-node to node is lambda by 4. So we are adding them up and we have found out that it is 5 lambda by 4. When we are subjecting lambda, it becomes 4L by 5. So how much the wavelength became in comparison to this, the first harmonic? In first harmonic, it was 4L. Now it is one-fifth of 4L. So in first harmonic, the frequency we called it as fundamental frequency F0. It has to be 5 times of F0. So you see, third harmonic again is found not at 4 f naught, rather 5 f naught. So the pattern is quite clear that we are going to find the harmonics at every interval of f naught, thrice f naught, 5 f naught, 7 f naught, and so on. But we can remember this as odd number multiple of fundamental frequency. All right. So between two fixed ends and between one close and one open end, this is the difference. Between two fixed ends, the harmonics were found at integral multiple of f0. But here, harmonics are found at odd number multiple of f0. All right? And you should be able to draw the diagram like this for any particular harmonics. Like if you have been asked to draw the diagram on this particular tube, uh, of same length L for suppose 11th harmonics. Well, 11th harmonics, so you should be able to draw it. Okay, so here we have just drawn up to third harmonic, first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic. You just look at the pattern. In this first harmonic, we have one anti node, one node. In second harmonic, two anti node, two nodes. In third harmonic, three anti-node, three nodes. So isn't it quite obvious that for 11th harmonic, there should be as many as 11 anti-nodes and 11 nodes? So this is the way keeping this thing in mind and following that to be able to draw the diagram concerned. All right. So let's move forward. If we would like to see the standing wave now between two open ends. What to do between two open ends so again this is the tube of length l but here we keep both the ends open so if both the ends remain open and we have already said it that close end corresponds to a node whereas open end corresponds to an anti-node so here the two open ends will obviously make an anti-node here. 
all right now you might have a question that since neither of the ends is closed so how the wave gets reflected and superposed with the incident wave and form a standing wave pattern isn't it because neither of the ends is closed here so the answer is that when the tuning fork is held at the one end of the tube it causes the air column inside the tube to vibrate back and forth and this vibration of the air column inside the tube causes a pressure difference a pressure difference that means the pressure of the air inside the tube and pressure outside the tube is not same so inside the tube and outside the tube the is a difference in pressure and this end of the tube this end of the tube is acting like a pressure wall it is imaginary a pressure wall it is acting like a because of the pressure difference between the inside of the tube and outside of the tube and this causes the pre imaginary pressure wall causes the wave to be reflected and to be able to superpose with the incoming wave but since this is an open end it is not a fixed so it cannot change the phase of that wave by 180 degree it cannot change the phase by 180 degree on the other hand we can say it just remains in phase so when it remains in phase it means the constructive superposition takes place here and leading to an anti node to be formed here <clears throat> all right so here again at this fundamental frequency the first harmonic we see two anti nodes at these two open ends and one node in between two anti node and node this is the wave pattern we see at the lowest frequency between two open ends so if we now would like to see how much the wavelength here is so anti node to anti node the distance is lambda by 2 so length is lambda by 2 so lambda when we subjected we got it is twice the length of the tube fine we now increase the frequency how did we increase the frequency we now brought another tuning fork of higher frequency the length of the tube remains the same all right i didn't measure it when i drew so you know that uh, it seems that this tube is longer than the tube i drew earlier right here but it is actually not i didn't measure it i didn't follow the scale so i just mentioned that this length l this length l they are same so here in this particular length of the tube i just brought another tuning fork of the greater frequency i have increased the frequency to see the harmonics so when i increase the frequency this f1 which is greater than f0 more waves being fit here so here we saw two anti nodes one node and immediately higher frequency the standing wave that gives us three anti nodes two nodes that means nodes and anti nodes these are increasing by one so when they increase by one what is now the wavelength so it is anti node to anti node lambda by two lambda by two it is lambda so when we subjected lambda we can say it is l which is twice l by two this is some different way we have just expressed it because we would like to see how much this lambda became in comparison to the first one so in first one in first harmonic it was twice l now it is half of twice l since it is half of twice l the frequency must be doubled as frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength so the second harmonic we have found at just twice f naught all right just to get the pattern we would like to observe it for the third harmonic so f2 is even greater than f1 so here we had three anti node two nodes anti nodes and nodes will be increasing by one so now there will be four anti nodes and three nodes 
all right this is to maintain and this is how you have to draw the diagram and of course it is the sound that we hear at the either end of the tube sound is a longitudinal wave the particle is vibrating back and forth but we cannot draw the longitudinal wave so we are representing it drawing a transverse wave am i clear now we see how much of the wavelength we get here in this fixed length of the tube so lambda by 2 lambda by 2 lambda by 2 anti node to anti node anti node to anti node anti node to immediate next anti node so there are three uh, anti nodes you know interval so lambda by 2 times 3 or lambda by 2 plus lambda by 2 plus lambda by 2 that means thrice lambda by 2 which is twice l by 3 that is lambda if lambda became one third of the first we are always comparing this lambda with the first harmonic <coughs> with the first harmonic just to uh, you know uh, obtain the frequency how much it becomes in comparison to the first harmonic in comparison to the fundamental frequency since wavelength became one third frequency is now three times so here we again see the harmonics are found at f naught twice f naught thrice f naught four f naught five f naught and so on what we can conclude we can say that the harmonics for the two fixed ends and for the two open ends are found to be at same interval of fundamental frequency that means integral multiple of fundamental frequency between two fixed between two open it is same but between one fixed and one open it is odd number multiple of fundamental frequency that is what you have to remember if you find the fundamental frequency for you know between two closed ends at 20 hertz then second harmonic at 40 hertz third harmonic at 60 hertz so 20 times 1 20 times 2 20 times 3 20 times 4 20 times 5 and so on if you find the fundamental frequency first harmonic between two open ends at say for an example 10 hertz then you are going to see the second harmonic third harmonic fourth harmonic and so just multiplying this 10 with 2 3 4 5 6 and so all right but between one open and one close you have to skip the middle one between first and second harmonic you are not going to multiply it two you have to get it at three times of the fundamental frequency then not at four rather five times the fundamental frequency all right so this was our you know uh, discussion about standing wave uh, between one close and one open and between two open ends i hope you understood if you still have some queries i will appreciate if you let me know what that query is so that i can uh, get back to you with the answer and uh, thank you for watching the video thanks a lot